changing world of securities took focus at Cybos 2019 with a lot of discussion around the financial pressure the sector is under. If you look at the asset management um, industry for the first time post-crisis, um, AUM has actually declined. The industry is really struggling and uh, it's been struggling since the regulatory changes of 2008. I think the asset manager community are still grappling with the question of whether they should scale or specialize. Thanks to the emerging technologies, we have huge opportunities and we need as an industry to not be scared and fearful of the change, but really look at what can we jointly to drive this forward. Um, I think five years from now, you will see an industry that's far more technology driven than it is today. When your client comes in to say, this is the conversation that we need to have, you're not just trying to do the same job with less people, you're actually doing it in a different way. The evolving geopolitical landscape makes it critical for SMIs to demonstrate higher levels of risk management, transparency and operational resilience. Should we be trying to fit DLT within our existing processes and paradigms, or should we be reimagining the entire capital markets, markets ecosystem with DLT? DLT has its uses. I mean, if you think of it, if we could reach the nirvana state of being able to share the same data seamlessly across the organization, sure, it would take out cost and risk. But that's a very, very long, hard transition to get to. We don't work in a bilateral world. We work in a multilateral world. I mean, you think about one of our clients will be invested in 60, 70, 80 markets, and each one of those markets has its own way of operating with its own laws, its own tax systems. The harmonization, in principle, everybody likes it but everybody would like to harmonize according to his own rules. And to, you need to have at a certain point of time a little bit of a you know, push from a public authority, if I can call it like that, to, to try to, to trigger harmonization. I can see a situation where a market like Australia deploys blockchain technology to support its market. I can't see a situation where there's a single blockchain. I think API is a great uh, example of um, exactly how do you fundamentally change your cost structure, but also uh, differentiate yourself in the services you provide. The, the, the reality is for, for organizations like ours who've been in the custody and fund administration business for 30 or 40 years, we've got a fairly complex technology stack. We've, we've spent the last number of years creating one front door, one data dictionary. Again, really easy to say, not easy to do when you have $25 trillion worth of assets under custody. The attention, both of the criminals and of the regulators, is switching from cash to securities. Just because people are stealing money, you know, using, in this case, cyber tools, doesn't mean that they're just going to target the payments colleagues. They're just as capable of targeting us. Because the payment banks have put up defenses, the average value that people are trying to steal is falling. So could the same be true in cyber as it is in money laundering, that we are going to be exposed to a lower risk frequency? But if it happens, the amounts are going to be so much larger in our space. The role that artificial intelligence could play was also a talking point. So much of what we do as an industry and certainly the transformation of our markets has been automating what can be automated. We see machine learning more broadly, which incorporates um, you know, elements of, uh, of natural language processing, natural language generation, um, supervised, primarily supervised ML as uh, you know, the killer app. In, in scare quotes for the back office. I think AI is becoming a real necessity in the financial industry because of the increasing volumes of data that they are produced every day. Just to give you an example, a big stock exchange is producing tens of billions of messages per day. How can you analyze all this data? We, we're talking about um, you know, reducing errors, reducing operational risk, reducing cost, and improving the client experience, right? And if AI can help us do that, then yes, it will be transformational for our business, yeah. and it can. I'm, I'm a career technologist in security services, so I can't help but invoke the Gartner hype curve. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think we're um, still approaching the peak of inflated expectations but the trough of disillusionment is uh, still ahead of us. One of the key talking points was the ethical approach to investments favoured by millennials and Generation Z. So Generation Z um, are now the biggest demographic on the planet. They comprise 32% 
of the world's population, so that's 7.7 .7 billion people. So at some point, whether if, you, if you're not already, you are going to be engaging with Generation Z. What we see from this younger generation is one that's going to be vocal. So on the streets, they're going to be visible. And actually, they're going to help drive and influence the industry itself. What they're not going to do, though, is bring the assets. There is an interplay between what the next gen wants. And sure, they don't have the asset base yet but they bring then mommy and daddy on board or grandpa and grandma on board, and this then influences the whole asset shift. Realistically, when we think about it, I think from a societal perspective, I'm not sure we can quite wait for the millennials to inherit the wealth and then reinvest it and then think about changing the world. Increasingly, you, you can't have a product that, that doesn't say anything to ESG, that doesn't have you know, a narrative about responsible investing. If you buy a share or if you invest in a share, you need to be an active shareholder. You need to go and vote according to um, your sustainability guidelines. You need to engage with your investee companies and tackle them on certain Unless you do that, you can do sustainable investing all you want, but our world is still going to go down the drain. One, be bold. Second, be transparent, and third, be credible. So in that sense, don't wait for the demand to come. This is definitely an area with first mover advantage in it. Many customers already think that you're investing responsibly on their behalf. They, they probably don't realize some of the gaps that's there. So, you know, fill those gaps. Stop thinking about ESG products and ethical products and think about how ESG and responsible investing is integrated across all of the products that you offer. Mm -hmm.